Well, hello YouTube, this is RL coming to you again from my channel, and today we are going to be reviewing Contra. So once again, I have a special guest. Should I call you a special guest? I don't know. I think Am I special right at this point? <laughs> Uh, it's really not a special guest. It's uh, it's a guest. That's right. CK. Welcome hey. back, CK. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? So we're going to be talking about retro games. This is our new retro gaming series. Yes, it's, it is. It's uh, called Retro Life. We're going to be reviewing retro video games from the NES up to the Sega Genesis. Yep, the era. 80s and 90s generation consoles. 80s. Everything before 64. Right. Nothing against the 64. I just don't have the emulator for the 64. <laughs> <laughs> and I never really played 64. I avoided the 64 era, so I really never got into it. And you know, the funny story is, I when I got into retro gaming about, I guess back in 2010, approximately. Uh, interesting story, I was doing improv at the time, and someone in my improv group, does anyone want an NES? It just so happened to be wearing a retro Atari shirt the exact day. And he saw it, he said, you probably want an NES, don't you? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? It was ironically on my birthday, and I went to pick it up. So I ended up getting an NES. I replaced the pin connectors. It cost me twenty dollars. It was the best twenty dollars of my life, and I ended up getting into retro games. Anyways, we're gonna move on to talking about Contra. I'm more than happy to talk about Contra. One of my all-time favorite. I enjoyed that game thoroughly with my sister and my neighbor, who were both terrible at the game, like worse than mm -hmm. I was. So playing oh. the two-player version and having to carry them was just <laughs> an absolute riot, as you can imagine with that game. Yeah, especially when you're going into the uh, levels where you're going up. And then yes, the, the jumping ones. <laughs> and, and, you basically, and the other person just dies, you know. But we're going to be talking about the graphics, looking at it with a lens of the 1980s. And so 90s. We, yeah. And 90s, of course. So we're going to be rating graphics on a scale of like, love, and loathe. How would you describe the graphics? I think the graphics were a lot better than a lot of the games only a couple of years after the console would actually come out so the console's maybe what four years old at this point so yes. at that time it was average i definitely give it a like i don't love it but i don't i definitely don't loathe it i'm definitely give it a like i think for nes games it is definitely one of the better looking graphics on this system i think if you look at it and the color scheme and the details all the levels have a nice bright bright look to it i would give the graphics a love i mean I, maybe it's a sentimental thing, but I'm looking at it from its time, the way it compared to other NES games for its day. It was one of the better graphics on the system, I believe. Okay, cool. How do you describe the music? Did you enjoy it? Did I thoroughly enjoy every level in that. Even the weird ones, like when you're at the uh, in the factory, I think it is, or whatever, the machinery one with the, the clamps that come down from the ceiling and the cart yes. that runs along track. That that track was kind of okay. And then going into the alien base, uh, sorry, spoiler, in case anyone hasn't actually played it. <laughs> yes, there oh, are no. aliens near the end of this game. <laughs> oh, you just ruined it for everyone who didn't play this game. And <laughs> but you've had fair, you've had you've had decades of warning. And you've had decades, decades of time, so... You've had since the late <laughs> 80s to play this game, and if you are worried about spoilers when it comes to NES games, well, sorry, you've come to the wrong channel. That's right, that's right. But um, straight up, I'd put a love. The first two levels, a lot of the Contra, even with the Super C and some of the other ones, I love the tracks. They were upbeat. They definitely fit the uh, the atmosphere, like with regards mm -hmm. to every level that's there. The music is pretty specific. Like, you know, when you're on uh, stage two and you're doing the vertical kind of walking forward up on the screen right. that kind of like do 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 kind of like a jungle <laughs> electronic beat it's awesome and it sticks in your head kind of like final fantasy fight music it's one of those things that you just your brain goes to and you're like yeah i remember that track that is so iconic to that era and to my childhood and contra is definitely one of them so it gets a retro love from me i think the the music the first level especially the first level is so iconic it's, it's just as iconic as the mario you know mario first level That's mario right. you know yeah. do, 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 that's my rendition of Mario. I'm not a musician, <laughs> but uh, that's my uh, take on it. But that's gaming classic m music, you know? I, yes. It's 
Contra is right up there. It's definitely, as I said, it's a retro love for me. So moving on, gameplay. You know yes. what? Using all the directions for the guns, having to deal with basically bullet storms and a side scroller, having to work with a partner, which, I mean, two-player games, especially two players at once in an NES game back then wasn't super common. So when you ever got a chance to play a game like that and as in to entertaining as this is, gameplay gets a retro love for me. That game on Contra, the first, all the Contra games are so well done. Yes. Uh, it's a lot of, it's so enjoyable. The way you can shoot in all the directions and the guns, as you said, yeah, so the, for gameplay for me, it's definitely a retro love. I, it's a classic. What can I say? I'm having a little trouble. Let's go on to controls. <laughs> Let's go on to controls. I enjoy the game uh, with regards to the control. Um, obviously, shooting on an angle while you're running up and down is helpful. And I would definitely give it to the developers to not force us to only shoot into two planes, which is like forward horizontally on the x-axis and then straight up and down on the y-axis but the angle shooting really helps with regards to um, managing your way through the game and being able to jump jumping is key in a lot of games that have jumping and this game has a lot of jumping and a lot of timed Mm -hmm. jumping too so you really need to be able to control your character in the air while they're kind of moving you Mm -hmm. know to fine-tune your landing and i mean i give this game a retro love strictly because i can jump and maneuver in the air yeah, no, it's, it's the, the controls are tight. At times when you control, you feel sluggish or you feel like you can't jump or it's That's very right. sensitive or it's overly sensitive or it's too loose. Yep. This game has the perfect controls because, you know, because if they are too loose, you can't hit those jumps and can't get onto those platforms. It's frustrating and you don't want to have a game where, you know, you want it to be a challenge, but you don't want to have to throw your uh, controller against the wall. <laughs> Nintendo and, toss, yes. But, the uh, you know, but Contra's a hard game. Thankfully, they had a 30 lives, you know, the cheat, the, the Contra yes. The Konami code, baby. Yeah, so um, I love the controls. Again, a retro love for me. It was definitely one of the best control games on the Nintendo system at the time. There's a reason why this game is so beloved still to this day. And if the controls weren't tight, I don't think we would be talking about this game at the same level of love. We wouldn't. Definitely wouldn't. So let's move on to the last rating. Story. What did you think of the story now? I thought the story was as epic as the 80s were especially the late 80s so we had aliens coming out i think the year before 85 or 86 aliens 2 or aliens sorry which is alien 2 and um i believe in that year or or close that time too i mean schwarzenegger was doing movies already and uh, i think predator might have been maybe something at the time but that game definitely has a heavy alien feel to it kind of like a die hard slash alien slash predator 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 yeah it's definitely got that vibe to it right so with regards to story i think the story was great how it was delivered with you just making your way through the levels and not really kind of like any prequel or preface in and no real kind of conclusion unlike you know we talk about now super c it's a different story but for this one i give it a retro love i love that generation i love that era and i love the fact that they took these two kind of game styles and took the 80s macho you know action movie thing and jammed it into a game i mean obviously the story I mean, you know, compared to games to this day, we're not comparing it to to this day. There wasn't a lot of story elements in it. It was very subtle. At the end, you get a bit of a description of what you did and all that. And we figured out throughout the the levels that there's an alien thing going. But the story was subtle. It was almost like, you know, you know, classics like, uh, you know, Eco. There's not much story there, but it's subtle. But it does the job. And so some people will say, well, where's their story in Contra? Well, if you're, you're comparing it to today's games, yes, it's minuscule. But there is a story, and it has a flow while you're playing the game. That's right. That's right. You discover it. You know, when you start playing the game, you don't know it's an Aliens game. But as you play through the levels, you discover by the end that it's an Aliens game where you're fighting aliens. You are fighting aliens, and and you are beating aliens. (laughs) And a side note, uh, the cover is uh, basically Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right. I was told the other one was was supposed to be Rambo, but I think they're both Schwarzenegger pictures. I've been seeing that and reading that too and I, and yes I believe this was supposed to be kind of two versions of but personally I honestly believe that is that is a Rambo that is definitely a Rambo or a Rambo-ish type character at that mm-hmm. time because it's not like Rambo was ultra unique no. but I mean they just Stallone the made him Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone were the two action icons in that right. era so I'm going to say the story for me is a retro life alright so that is our review on Contra our first review retro, retro life, life. Yep. and uh, that was pretty fun it was Thank you for having me, and uh, hope we get to cover some more fun games. I can't wait to play some more emulations, but I also have 
of the console as well. So if I got it, I'll play it. So we will be discussing many more video games, retro video games in the future, and uh, with CK and uh, some of my own. And I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, I really enjoyed talking to you about retro video games, and uh, hope to have you again. Definitely. Thanks for having me, RL. And uh, I look forward to playing more games for the next weeks and months to come. You use my line. <laughs> I'm gonna add that out. Right? Keep it, dude. Recording. Keep it. <laughs> Well, on that note, there's nothing else for me to say except for me to say like, subscribe, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Contra, and I will have more videos for you in the weeks, months, and years to come. I get to say it too. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.